Well, good afternoon. Thank you for uh, attending the DAV National Convention Membership Seminar. Uh, I'm your National Membership Director, Doug Wells. Uh, it's my privilege uh, to be here with you this afternoon. Uh, let me take a couple of moments to make some introductions. Um, to my left, uh, if I could get them to raise their hands as I call them, uh, the Chairman of our Interim Membership Committee, Warren Tobin, from the great state of North Dakota. Uh, Ronnie Mabry from the great state of Connecticut. He's a Patriot fan, but don't hate on him. Uh, Ed Kalk from right here in the great state of Louisiana. And Brandy Hayek from uh, my home state of Michigan. Uh, I'd also like to take a moment. Uh, she probably doesn't need an introduction because I'm sure you've all uh, already um, gotten to know her and embrace her, but uh, Robin Higgins, my membership manager back in headquarters, she's in registration, thank you. Without her, my days would be uh, much more hectic. Uh, and also, uh, I want to take a moment to point out Heather Kohlmeyer, one of my analysts from National Headquarters. Uh, she is our resident uh, membership system and portal uh, expert, and she's positioned uh, outside the resolutions office uh, for assistance if you need that. So please give them all a round of applause. Uh, and just by uh, way of some uh, bookkeeping here, um, our chairman announced this uh, from the credentials committee this morning. And, We'll continue to announce it as appropriate, but uh, we have recognized an unusually no low number of department uh, delegates. Uh, so please uh, ask your folks, your, your comrades here at the convention, if they had intended to register as a department delegate, please ask them to inspect their credentials. And if there's a discrepancy, have them come see us in registration. We will get that squared away. It doesn't take but a few seconds. So uh, we just want to make sure that the count is right. Um, and I apologize for any inconvenience there. but. Uh, uh, again, I am Doug Wells, uh, your National Membership Director. Uh, this, is in my, this is my information on the, the screen here, uh, dwells at dav.org. I dwell at DAV, um, so it's kind of hard to forget. But uh, <clears throat> that is my email address, comes right to me, uh, and that is my direct line. So I want to be available to you. I want to hear the great success stories. I want to help you resolve your issues. Anything that I can do related to uh, your membership program, I help you facilitate anything in any way, um, please let me know if I don't have the answer. I believe in a no wrong door policy. I will get you to the right person that will. So don't hesitate to, to reach out. Uh, got a lot of exciting stuff to talk about. I uh, wanted to give just a quick recap uh, on our March Membership Madness um, uh, event that we did last spring. Um, we want to go ahead and just remind everybody that we are going to be doing this again this year. We did uh, limit it to applications that came in via the mobile app, which I will talk about uh, here in a little bit. Um, this year, moving forward, we're gonna open this up to all electronic forms of, um, of uh, DAV membership applications. So anything online that you do to sign somebody up will count for this on behalf of your department. So remember, there are two, uh, main prizes, so well, actually four main prizes, but two for the departments and then two for individual recruiters. Uh, we have a, a cup for the department champion, the person that goes through uh, the, um, the brackets uh, successfully and ends up the tournament champion. And then we also have the most valuable player for the department, uh, the one that recruits the most overall. Uh, so if a department is eliminated on an off week or something of that nature, uh, we still want them to compete because they can win the department MVP. In addition to those fine trophies, they get a $250 gift card uh, from Office Depot so uh, to help with administrative costs and things of that nature. And then also um, we have iPads uh, that we will give to the, the, uh, the top individual recruiter and runner-up. Runner now you have to recruit at least 25 members online to be eligible for this. Um, and I'm gonna talk a little bit more about this as we move forward, but uh, all the metrics tell us that uh, we want to get folks online with recurring credit card payments because they're exponentially more likely to convert to a full life member if we do that. So uh, please promote this. Please uh, start making preparations for next fall. As soon as you are, uh, pardon me, for next spring, as soon as you start to hear uh, stuff on TV about the NCAA tournament, uh, start thinking, okay, it's time to start recruiting for uh, March Membership Madness. <clears throat> so, and as you can see, here's the bracket that went through. Um, you know, I had to chastise my counterpart from Michigan, Brandy, because she let Ohio beat us. I don't know how that happened, but, uh, you know, my, my good friends from uh, that state down south did not let me uh, live that down. 
But uh, Nebraska ended up winning uh, both the tournament and the department MVP. So please give a round of applause to, to Nebraska. <clears throat> For those of you that are in the membership system uh, and are interested in the membership standings and the divisions, how we break that up, we have changed uh, our methodology there. Uh, instead of uh, breaking up the divisions by the uh, uh, groups of life member total that they have in their state. So you would just have like the few really big states and then you'd have a lot of little states together. Uh, all of our recruiting efforts right now are percentile based. So I thought it was a, you know, a fair, a more fair situation to um, make sure that each division had an equal number of uh, contestants as possible. So I just went uh, down the life membership population totals, the top 10 largest departments um, were put into uh, a, a division, then the next top 10, the next top 10, and then 11 and 11 because we have 52 departments. So uh, now each department essentially has, or each division has essentially an equal number of departments that they're competing against. So I, I hope that this will level the playing field a little bit with respect to uh, our membership standings uh, competitions. Because of course, um, we, we want to foster that friendly competition and, and camaraderie uh, amongst each department. I had uh, Nebraska and Iowa emailing me constantly toward the end of the membership year because they had a little competition going amongst themselves and uh, I thought that was great stuff. So there's the first three divisions and then you can see how the uh, next couple of divisions panned out there and these have 11 each of course. <clears throat> and if you have any questions on that or what that's going to look like and how that will change, for sure give me a call. There may be some movement between the divisions if uh, uh, departments, uh, life member populations expand or contract. Um, you know, so certainly we could see some movement that way, but it'll be minimal, if any. Um, and also, if you're, if you're taking slide, uh, taking... Um, Pictures of each slide, you don't have to do that. Uh, just give me, uh, shoot me an email and I would be happy to share this presentation with you, uh, no problem. Um, so we have a, a really big task ahead of us this year. Um, this is something that's incredibly important and I'm hopeful that uh, all of my chapter leaders uh, will uh, be talking to their department folks and our department leadership will be disseminating this stuff out uh, with great vigor to our chapter folks. But uh, <clears throat> we have um, you know, just under 200,000 trial members on our rolls. Uh, now, trial members are folks that have not paid us anything towards their membership dues. Uh, typically speaking, the, the vast majority of them are folks that have uh, transitioned out of the military and been exposed to one of our transition service officers uh, on the bases uh, that have helped them file their initial claim with VA and, and got them routed to our national service offices and that sort of thing. And we offered them a, a trial membership. Uh, and it's, it's a very, um, you know, complicated uh, issue, but uh, it, most of these folks are 90% 90, 90 of them are, are more than three years old on our rolls. So we, we need to, uh, uh, you know, do what we have to do and, and probably purge anybody that hasn't been converted to a paid member uh, by the, the next year end. Uh, we have gone to great effort to um, locate and make sure we have good addresses, phone numbers, emails, uh, at least two of the three on, on most of these folks. Um, <clears throat> but uh, uh, we, we also included them in our most recent uh, spring mailing. Uh, all of these trial members that we did have good contact information on were included in our spring mailing. Um, and we did get a little bit of a return on them. So uh, we did, we were able to manage a conversion rate on some of them, uh, but not nearly as many as we had hoped. Um, so I'm hopeful that, um, you know, a grassroots approach will be much more successful. We're going to organize some nationwide conference calls uh, and hopefully, uh, you know, we'll get uh, our membership chairmen involved and department leaderships, uh, try to figure out what the best practices are for, uh, for this effort. 
Uh, and I think we can be very successful, uh, but we have to really look at the dynamic of how we're recruiting. Um, moving forward, I want to make this, I want to shift away from, you know, the emphasis being on converting part life to full life. And that's kind of where we've been. We still need to have strategies internally on how to ensure that people will convert to full life members because that's, we, we want that, of course. But we, you know, we, we need to, um, we need to get after the folks that aren't members of DAV in any capacity uh, already. And there's, a lot, there's an awful lot of folks out there that are el eligible for membership uh, in DAV. So um, in, in years past, I know that a lot of folks have felt like um, they've kind of been out in the ether just, you know, walking around waiting to, to bump into somebody magically that is eligible for membership in the DAV. Well, no more. It's my commitment to you that we are going to share our, uh, our lists with you, our member prospect files, our uh, trial member lists, uh, so that uh, you can sort them as best you see fit in your locale, divvy them up amongst your, your member recruiters, uh, and, and go after these folks and, and offer them, you know, uh, service first. What can we do for you? That's who we are, right? What can we do for you? Uh, is there anything we can do for your family? Can we uh, offer you a service through our local uh, uh, voluntary assistance program, volunteer assistance program through LVAP? Uh, can, we, can we help coordinate a service for you? And then we would certainly love you to be a member of DAV. Uh, but the service needs to be con become first, and that's where I think our focus needs to be, is, a, is reaching out to our fellow veterans uh, of all eras, offering the services that we provide, leveraging those things that we're so good at, uh, our, our service officers, our, uh, our voluntary services, our transportation network, um, all of the other unique things that all different chapters and departments do, offering those things, and I'm telling you, I believe in my heart of hearts that if we do that first, they're gonna be chomping at the bit to become a member. And I also think, because we're not, um, we're not focusing on the conversion from part life to full life at that point, just bringing them aboard, that uh, utilizing the online applications and inviting them to become a member for as little as $10 a month, that will be more enticing. That will be much more enticing to not only them, but to the recruiters as well. So there's pluses to that all the way around. So coming back to the, to the trial members, uh, as I said, we, we went through uh, a great deal of effort to try to locate as many of these folks as we could. Um, unfortunately, during 2017's year in processes here at the end of June, uh, we had to purge over 36,000 trial members from our list because we could not find good contact information on them at all. And I, of course, wasn't going to share that, those folks with you just to have you get return address uh, envelopes and things like that. So, uh, you know, you may have noticed that our, our membership is now nearly 1.3 million. We, we weren't able to maintain the 1.3 million membership um, and stay above that, but I'm hopeful that we can get back there with the hard work and support of each other. Um, trial members have had a historically low conversion rate, um, and I'm hopeful that as we, you know, let you know where these folks live and create that target-rich environment for you, uh, that your membership recruitment efforts, especially when it comes to the conversion of our newest veterans, will be much, much higher. Um, and I am working hard with the Interim Membership Committee and, and other folks at headquarters trying to create symbiosity between myself and uh, my counterpart in volunteer services, John Kleindienst, to uh, leverage both of our programs, uh, and as well as Jeff Hall, our, our employment director, to leverage all, all three of our programs for the benefit of one another. Um, something that we're implementing on the professional side of the house with our transition service officers, uh, historically, when uh, a TSO met uh, either in a group environment or one-on-one -on -one with, um, with uh, a, a transitioning service member, they would have them fill out a pre-separation briefing form or what we commonly refer to as a half sheet. Uh, and quite often, you know, the, the, the service member may not be getting out for six months, a year sometimes, and they would give us their base housing address or their .gov or .mil email address and, or government issued phone number. So once they transitioned out, we would, uh, we would lose track of them. So that was a uh, part of our problem here. You know, we did a great job of, 
of, you know, kind of landing a jab there while they were still in the military and, you know, exposing them to DAV programs and services, but we weren't able to follow up with that right hook because they would get out and we would lose track of them. So uh, once I identified that as an issue and now we've got some technology available to us, what's going to happen is we're getting rid of the half sheets. Uh, the 1990s have called and they want their, their stuff back, okay? So we're going to leverage technology. What we're going to do uh, is as we're giving that briefing either in a one-on-one -on -one basis or in a group setting, the TSO will have uh, the service member pull out their pad or their phone and text uh, DAV to a specific phone number and they will quickly get back a link that they will click on and it will create a form that will capture uh, six data points. Of course the phone number that they're, they're uh, texting from, their name, uh, date of birth, date of discharge, and the, the site they were at and maybe one or two other pieces of information. But the idea is to diary that information for 30 days subsequent to their data discharge. And then we come back to them with the offer for trial membership with the long form, maybe a soft ask for actual membership. Maybe we'll incentivize it with the premium item. I don't know, we're still looking at some of that. But nonetheless, we're gonna send them to a landing page that will inspire them to become members of the DAV, that will share real stories about real DAV members, about how we you know, impacted their life in the real world. Uh, and hopefully that will lead to higher conversion rates as we've seen with some other campaigns that we've implemented that strategy on. But the idea is to not ask them for their address and their, their specific information until well after they're discharged from the military. So we have good information and we can keep following up with them, uh, not only from national, but from the local level as we push these names and addresses out to you. Does that sound like a good idea? Okay, good stuff. So again, with the trial members, and again, we'll, we'll use this strategy for other things as well. We got cut off there. Um, <clears throat> we're gonna shoot these spreadsheets out to, uh, to our departments, and then they will kind of figure out what's the best strategy to get them out to their individual chapters. They're much more intimately familiar with the lay of the land in their individual jurisdictions than I am. Uh, because there will be a lot of situations in which uh, certain member prospects, recently discharged veterans, will live in kind of that no man's land that isn't within a chapter's jurisdiction, right? So they may have to say, hey, chapter 22, we want you to tackle these folks, even though we know they're not in your area, they're a little bit of, uh, away from you, but let's still reach out to them, invite them to DAV, that sort of thing. So there's going to be lots of discussions happening uh, like that moving forward. Uh, please, please. Uh, you know, take part in that stuff, reach out to your departments, they know this is coming, have conversations with them, let them know that you're willing to help, uh, you know, facilitate this, and uh, I think we can do great things together. So I really, truly appreciate any help that you can offer in that regard. <clears throat> so um, as you know, we have developed a new membership card. Uh, you will get, uh, when you sign up a new member, from the date that we get the application at headquarters, uh, so if you sign up online, it's essentially uh, uh, the following Monday or Thursday, depending on when you sign up, we get that application in, or uh, as soon as the paper application hits our doorstep, uh, within 30 days, the member, uh, the new member should have his new member recognition letter and his, and his membership card. Uh, if you do not see that happening within 30 days, uh, typically what we're seeing is about three weeks, but within 30 days, let me know. Give me the specific name of the veteran, uh, of the member, so that I can track it and see exactly what was going on with that. But that's our goal. Uh, if there was any premium item associated with their membership, uh, that will follow on within a, you know, a month or so uh, once they get their, their card. So, but I, I please, uh, I would like the feedback uh, if somebody's not seeing their membership card and welcome letter. Uh, within 30 days of us getting the application, okay? <clears throat> so uh, we launched this uh, when we were at convention last year, and between then and now, this video got 400,000 views on Facebook. Very impressive. Uh, as I traveled the country, um, I shared this at midwinter, but as I, I traveled the country going to different department conventions or conferences, 
I had many uh, members drag somebody else up by the shirt collar and say, Doug, will you explain to this person that you have to have been in combat to be a member of DAV? No, you don't. Doug, will you explain to this person that your disability has to be service connected by VA to be a member? You know, face palm, no, you don't. So uh, what I decided to do was to partner with our uh, communications department to develop a, just a quick little uh, fun uh, video designed for social media that kind of explains uh, who's eligible for DAV membership and what some of the benefits are. Now, since we've developed this video, our benefits packages have changed a little bit, our member benefits. Uh, we're looking at, uh, you know, new agreements with our legacy partners. So you might see some people listed on this video that we no longer have a current agreement on that aren't listed on the member benefits page. But rest assured, that page is uh, quickly being populated with new partners with uh, appropriate agreements that are favorable to DAV and that are aligned with partners that uh, have the same um, have the same goals in mind uh, that we do. So, uh, but I just wanted to share this video with you uh, really quick. Like I said, uh, almost 400,000 views, thousands and thousands of shares. So I really have no idea how many millions of impressions that is, but a uh, uh, great little video the communications department helped me put together. As one of the nation's leading veteran service organizations, DAV successes on behalf of veterans rely solely on the strength and engagement of its members which help ensure veterans' issues are properly addressed in your local community and in Washington. But who are DAV members, and how can you become one? Well, first, any service member who is not dishonorably discharged and sustained an injury or illness during their time in the military, whether service connected by the VA or not, or anyone who aggravated a previous injury during his or her time in service, is eligible for DAV membership so long as they serve during a period of armed conflict. And no, it doesn't have to be direct combat. So what does DAV membership include? It's well known that DAV services, including professional help with VA claims and the transition and employment assistance DAV provides all veterans at no cost, do not require membership in DAV. However, DAV members do get savings on Ford vehicles, exclusive USAA Rewards credit card points, and year-round discounted pricing on hotel and rental car rates, just to name a few. You also get a free subscription to DAV Magazine. But most importantly, especially if you were helped by DAV, becoming a member gives you the opportunity to pay it forward and add your voice to help your fellow veterans. And how do you become a DAV member? Just log on to DAV.org slash membership and fill out an application. You can submit it online or send it in the mail. Either way, joining DAV's ranks brings individual perks and strengthens the voices of our nation's veterans in your local community and in Washington. Learn more about becoming a DAV member by visiting DAV.org slash membership and help fulfill the promises to the men and women who served. Not bad, right? Good stuff. Yeah, you can clap for that. So, and that's the kind of stuff, of course, you want to do with social media. You want it to be quick hitting, plain, direct. Uh, and, you know, you think you're looking at those kooky little stick figures that they wouldn't have the impact that they do, but people love them. So it's great stuff, and our communications uh, does a, team does a great job. Um, so we, we talked about earlier about uh, March Membership Madness and utilizing the online applications. Uh, again, uh, we want to do as much as we possibly can online uh, because all of the metrics uh, tell me that when we have them online with the recurring credit card, and this, is, this should be obvious, but uh, when they have the recurring credit card, it's kind of like fire and forget and they, they pay off their membership, right? Instead of uh, having to send us in a check whenever they get their quarterly statement. Um, you know, I, mean, I know there still are some folks out there that, that use checks, but, uh, you know, if I'm making a payment on something, I just throw it on the credit card and, and just know that it's coming out every month and it's uh, easy peasy, right? So uh, all of the online applications require a credit card with the exception of our over 80s. There is an option for over 80. It's the first question asked when you go to the, the online application. Um, where people make a mistake sometimes when you click the over 80 button because it asks you are you over 80 years old yes or no 
uh, when you click that button, give it a second to transfer, to, to change to the other form. If you don't do that, then, I, then we get people calling us at headquarters. Why is it asking me for a credit card for over 80? Um, so you got to give it a, the, the form a, a second to, uh, to change depending on your internet connection. It may lag a little bit, but just a little uh, pro tip there. But uh, um, the online application is the way to go. So whether you access it through your phone, a pad, using our, our mobile app that I'll talk about here in a second on how to get that on there. Um, and please don't let the fact that somebody doesn't have an email account dissuade you from using uh, the online application. We have a, a naming convention here that I've got at the bottom of the picture. So, you know, first name, last name, zip code, at davdonor.org. So that's all you got to do, and that will let the system know that this person does not have a unique um, email address, uh, but it'll still function. We, you do not want to use your own email address. You don't want to use the department or the chapter's email address. That causes all kinds of problems because typically that's how the system recognizes that person. That's the unique identifier for that person. So create the unique identifier this way, uh, or just get comfortable creating them a, a Yahoo or a Gmail or an Outlook account uh, so that they have their own email account and show them how to use email. But uh, certainly, if, if push comes to shove, uh, use the naming convention there. For me, it'd be Douglas Wells 41042 at davdonor.org. And I'm unique now, okay? So uh, don't let not having a, an email address dissuade you. Uh, don't let the, the member prospect not having an email address dissuade you from, from utilizing that. Just don't use yours or somebody else's. <clears throat> so um, the mobile device application, uh, or we call the mobile app, sometimes we refer to it as the member app, um, it's not a true app that you would get from the Apple Store or the Droid Store. Uh, really what we're doing is we're just creating a shortcut on your desktop to the mobile-friendly mobile um, app, web application for the DAV membership application. Um, and this works for both uh, Droid and Apple products. Uh, so essentially all you do is if you have an Apple phone, you launch Safari in the web, uh, in the web address, you just type DAV.org slash member app. Do not use www or anything like that. Just dav.org slash member app. Uh, when, if you put it in there correctly, you'll see it'll say secure something or other, and then you'll get a, the, the app will come out and the little light box will drop down. The same difference for Droid, uh, type in dav.org slash member app, and the same thing happens. The little light box that drops down, uh, as you can see there with the little X by it, uh, it gives you the instructions on how to save it to your home screen. So for the Apple, you know, you can save this form, to your home screen to sign up DAV members on the go. Uh, to do this, tap the little box with the arrow come out of it and then hit add to home screen. It's that simple, it's a couple of taps. Once you do that, the app will close out and you'll see the icon on your phone. It's almost the same exact process for the Droid. Instead of hitting the little arrow at the bottom, you hit the little three dots up in the tight right hand corner to get the drop down menu, hit add to home screen, add, add, you're done, okay? So if you have issues with that, you can see Heather, Robin, myself, uh, we'll uh, be happy to stay and put that on everybody's phone in here if uh, you'd like it. And then you can teach other people how to do it as well. So we developed a little video related to the, uh, to the mobile device icon. And by the way, these videos are available on the DAV's YouTube channel. Uh, so if you go to conferences or do information seminars at your chapter, you can certainly pull this stuff up and, and use it as part of your presentation. But uh, this is another great little um, video that our communication staff put together for us. At more than 1.3 million strong from all wartime generations, DAV members are the lifeblood of the organization. That's why recruiting new members is so important. And with today's technology, there's always a quick and easy way to sign up. Just log on to DAV.org slash member app from your mobile device. That's DAV.org slash member app. And it connects you to a mobile application for DAV membership. It's just a couple basic questions about the applicant and their service that takes only a few minutes to complete. Just remember to save the application to your phone or tablet by following the instructions on your Apple or Droid device. That way you can easily access it the next time you come in contact with a potential DAV member. 
Remember, DAV.org forward slash member app and save it to your phone or tablet. DAV always welcomes new members, and with your help, we can continue to provide them a lifetime of support. So again, please uh, use that to encourage folks to uh, utilize the on -am online application. I can't, I can't stress how important it is. Um, to further incentivize you to do this, how many people out here uh, like getting the points to use in the, in the store for membership? Raise your hand, raise it high. There you go, so most of you, right? So I don't know if uh, you knew this or not. Hopefully you did. Hopefully folks have shared it with you if you haven't been to one of my seminars recently. But beginning uh, October of 16, I changed the award scheme for points. So if you, uh, under the old system, uh, if you signed up somebody, regardless if it was on paper or online, if they became a part life, you got one point. If they When they converted to full life, you got another point for a total of two points. If they signed up as a full life member out of the gate, you got two points, right? So beginning October 1st of 16, for online only, if you sign them up online, when they become a part life member, you still only get one point. But when they convert to full life membership, you get two more points for a total of three points. So if you don't sign them up online, you're robbing yourself of a point, right? So sign them up online. Can you tell I want you to sign up folks online now? Right? Good stuff. Okay. So uh, get them online. I'm telling you, your, your lives will be much easier. There, there may be part life members on your roles for a while, but not nearly as many because guess what? Much many, many more of them are going to uh, convert to full life membership. I promise you, that's what the metrics tell us. Uh, how many people in here, by show of hand, have used the new member orientation guide? Yeah, it's getting better. Getting better. So good. I appreciate. I appreciate that. Um, so the inner membership committee, uh, an iteration ago, uh, did a lot of hard work on this guide. Um, the idea behind this guide is uh, the the chapter should should take it and modify the the new member guide, the mentoring guide, and the PowerPoint presentation to the specifics of their chapter. Uh, these are all in editable, editable Word and PowerPoint formats. I want you to change them and modify them to demonstrate the uniqueness of your locality, of your chapter. What's the history chapter? Explore the richness of that. If you've got strong relationships uh, with the VAVS program, highlight that. If you've got strong relationships with a local veterans employment representative and helping veterans uh, acquire employment, highlight that. Highlight the things that make your particular chapter different and special and unique um, because that's the rich stuff that's important that continues to, to uh, you know, be inviting to new members. And that's what they want to see and let them know what you're about as you're encouraging them to continue to participate in your chapters. Um, if you go to the members only section you're, of the DAV.org website, you're going to see all of these resources available to you. You do need your membership number to gain access to it. Um, but it is in the members only section of the, of the website. Um, so you have both guides in there, the PowerPoint, and there's also a, a recording of a webinar I did a while back explaining in greater detail everything I just let you know. So, um, you know, make sure you take a gander at it uh, and, and uh, um, you know, let us know if you have any feedback for how we should improve it for everybody's. Uh, use. Uh, Warren uh, was an integral part of that. He'd love to know that as well. Um, so for all of you that have already used it, please, uh, you know, bend uh, Warren's ear a little bit here and uh, he can take notes and make recommendations moving forward as to how we should modify it. But that's a great resource. Uh, don't let it just sit there. Uh, the the Air Membership Committee did a lot of hard work on that and I hope everybody uses it because I think it's a great tool. And I think if we you know, invite them to understand the richness and the, uh, the, the diversity of DAV and the uniqueness about who we are and what we do and how we tackle things uh, and all the programs that we have to offer. They're going to be much more inclined to be active members and help us out, right? So uh, that's what it's all about. Um, <clears throat> so as I'm coming to the end here, because I like to save a lot of time if we can for for questions and answers, uh, and I just won't be available, but my counterparts on the inner membership committee will be here as well. Uh, and again, 
no wrong door approach. Uh, if there's something we can't answer for you, we'll get you to the right person that can. Uh, but as I'm coming to the end here, I, I want to share something with you. And some of you may have already seen this because I, I use them in a lot of presentations that I do. But I think his message is so powerful. Um, to Whit Jones, if you've picked up a, a, a copy of National Geographic in the last you know, 30, 40 years, you, you've seen his work. Uh, he's a photographer, Nat Geo. And he's kind of um, encapsulated a lot of the life lessons that he's learned throughout his travels around the world. Um, and I found one that was particularly impressive. And I thought it, it truly related to membership recruitment and all the things that we're trying to do within DAV, uh, but particularly membership recruitment. And so I just wanted to kind of share this message with you, uh, if you'll indulge me for just a minute. <laughs> You know, my very first published photographs were on the pages of the National Geographic. I, I still find that hard to believe. I mean, it was crazy, but that's what happened. I was 26 years old, and Bob Gilka, the head of photography at the Geographic, called me back to their headquarters in Washington, D.C. to give me my marching orders. And I remember, I remember standing in the lobby of what they call Explorers Hall, and I was looking at at, at giant globes and dog sleds and submersibles and flags planted on Everest and, and surrounded by the most beautiful photographs I'd ever seen in my life. How was I going to prove that I was worthy of working here? And then I was taken upstairs and into Bob's office. Bob, Bob was a blunt man, just straight and to the point, and honestly, a little scary. Well, that morning, I was completely unprepared for what he said to me. He stopped me cold. He, he changed the way I did everything from that day forward. He looked at me from over his desk and he said, You know, DeWitt, the people who photograph for this magazine are the best in the world. You don't have to prove yourself. I don't have to prove myself. I mean, honestly, that's all I've been thinking about since I got the assignment. You don't have to prove yourself, he continued. But by God, every day you had better improve yourself. The words went in. Don't prove yourself. Improve yourself. Bob was still talking. He said, you know, I want you to spend your time every day trying to be better than you were yesterday. If you learn something that will help the others, well, then share it. That way we'll all get better faster. Don't prove yourself. Improve yourself. Otherwise, you're fired. Big first lesson. Right out of the blocks. I don't know how many times I've thought about it, how many times I've acted on it since that day in Bob's office. Don't prove yourself. Improve yourself. And you know, living that lesson, I've come to see that life really is a lot more about cooperation than it is about competition. It wasn't proving myself or taking others down that allowed me to succeed. It was simply consciously, continuously improving myself, refining my skills, honing my wisdom, focusing my vision. Ultimately, the only person I was trying to surpass was me. Don't prove. Improve. Great stuff, right? Yeah, you can clap for that too. What's great? So, obviously, nobody in this room is in danger of being fired, except maybe me if you tell Barry I did a bad job. So, but uh, um, yeah, and you know what? Nobody in this room has to prove anything to every anybody because you've already proven everything you have to, had to prove by your service and sacrifice. However, I will challenge you all to improve. If you recruited one person last year, I challenge you to recruit two. Um, if you recruited 10, I challenge you to recruit 20. Double up your efforts. I think we can all have challenging but attainable goals. Um, and, you know, the other key point that he makes here is about, you know, sharing that knowledge. Um, using events like national convention, your department conventions, even your chapter meetings. You know, we, we, we all love the... Uh, the uh, uh, competition amongst recruiters and things of that nature, but if you're a successful recruiter who's winning 
uh, recruiter of the year, year in and year out, share what you're doing with everybody else. Ask to do a seminar, a recruitment seminar, share your ideas with your fellow members at your department convention or at a chapter meeting. Uh, because that's the only way we're all going to get better. This stuff shouldn't be rocket science. It's not rocket science, and it shouldn't be a state secret. If you're having success recruiting, please share that information, not only with your counterparts, but with me as well, so that we can share it with everybody as a best practice. Um, so I invite you to contact me if you have any questions or concerns. Um, before I take questions, I just want to leave you with a quick story. Uh, so a few, uh, a, a while back on the way home from church, uh, during church there were some, some uh, children that were being a little noisy and uh, having a, a little fit, maybe not being as reverent as they, they could have been. And so I asked my kids, you know, why it was important to be uh, reverent and, and quiet in church. And, and uh, you know, they were giving me answers that, that made me proud as a father. Uh, you know, well, Dad, we want to be polite so other people can hear the lesson. And uh, we want to give other people the chance to reflect and, uh, you know, feel what the lesson's supposed to be making them feel. And, and I get to my youngest son, Garrick, and, uh, who was about eight at the time, and I said, son, why do you think it's important to be quiet in church? And he said, so we don't wake up the people that are sleeping, Dad. <laughs> so <clears throat> I hopefully I, I didn't put anybody here to sleep. I hope that you uh, think this information was, was good and useful. Again, I will uh, share this presentation with anybody. Just shoot me an email, email at dwells at dav.org. Uh, dwells at DAV. You can't... You can't uh, forget it. So uh, I invite you to, to uh, come ask us questions or uh, afterward, and we'll take some questions now while we have some time. This mic is hot. So uh, if you're going to ask us a question, please use the mic. I can't reach it. It's too tall. There we go. That's better. Um, Deb Olson, Department of Massachusetts, membership chair for the department. I actually want to speak to Minnesota. Weren't they or the number one? Five years in a row. Mm hmm In their division. Shouldn't well, they were they're the ones still getting the award five years in a row. Shouldn't they be sitting up there actually telling us what they're doing? That that's a great suggestion. Who should I kick off the intermembership membership committee? Yeah. <laughs> but um uh, but I did, I was, was speaking to a few people, and another, just a suggestion, it's a good way if you have colleges, most of the colleges have veterans groups in them, mm -hmm. that to go to the veterans groups, a local one. Also, don't put the person in your chapter if they don't live in your area. They won't be active. You're still going to get credit for them, but put them in a chapter that's close to you. Great suggestions all. Um, to respond to the issue on the uh, college campuses, our national service offices uh, do a great job of reaching out to college campuses via our mobile service offices and they'll schedule stops there. Uh, we're increasing our efforts with that. Um, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, the uh, administrators at the college campuses aren't as inviting as we'd like them to be, but we're working on that. So yeah, great minds think alike. Yes, sir. Paul Herman, adjutant for Louisiana. Doug, I've got a question. The trial members, are they put into a, a chapter or or are they yep. just floating out there? Because if they're put into a chapter when we sign them up, that means we can't just sign them to a chapter. We have to transfer them. So. Right. Because, because of a glitch, there are a few trial members here or there that are associated with the chapter. That should not be the case. They should all belong to the department or in the national at large. Um, but we are going to share, like I said, uh, based on zip codes, all of that information with the departments, and then you will disseminate it down to the chapters. But what I'm saying is when we sign them up, mm -hmm. are we signing them up as new members going into chapter? Whatever, no, you will sign live? them up as brand new members, and you will assign them up to the most appropriate chapter. Okay, we won't be transferring them. No, they will not be transfers. They will be new paid members. Okay, thank you. Yep. Can you flip it on, see if it's got to be turned on? I, I thought it was on. They said it was hot. Paul, can you come grab this mic? We'll just let him use that. Yeah, yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, sir, go ahead. 
Oh, down here, okay. My name's John Pelletier, I'm from Chapter 5 in Los Angeles, California. We have, uh, what's the basically the time frame between when an applicant, he mails it in, and the time they get it back and they know they're in the DAV? Okay, so what should be happening is, and I, that's what I was mentioning earlier. Well, I mean, it's uh, the time frame, because I mailed some in back in February, and they didn't receive them probably to maybe last month. And so then I had a lot of them that when I mailed them and they had the chapter, they went to different chapters. And I had to call up and find out what couldn't. I had to go to make sure I had all my receipts for them to get them in. And then we had it, finally had it corrected. That's okay. one. And then I had one person, I argued, you have cash money, okay? I had one, I told her no to go get a money order and then mail it because, you know, you never know. Somebody might have some fingers. Well, she didn't, and she sent the money. Now, she's complaining and been bitching at me about she thinks maybe I took her money, you know. So, I mean, I don't know what's going on. But so, a couple of things. Let me ask you the second one first. Never mail cash. That's the last thing you that. want to I see. To check, money that. order, remember here cashier's check. Did, but it has cash on the paper. I, you I got understand credit that, card, cash, right. money order. Right. So I don't want them mailing cash, though. So that's what I'm saying. The, the forms are multiple use. So there are sometimes events where people can take cash and they can go ahead and uh, the, who's ever organizing the event in person can take cash and then they go get a money order and mail in all the applications. Okay. So that's how that should work. So to answer your first question. So in other words, I'm going to take, I'm going to take $40, I'm going to take it out of my pocket, and I'm going to give it to her. No, I didn't say that. So what we can do, you know, you can give me the name, and we can research it at headquarters. Uh, there, there may be an issue that we can resolve at headquarters, but you don't need to reach in your pocket and get anything. Okay, so I'm just saying for future reference, don't mail cash, and continue to do what you did, discourage folks from mailing cash. Okay. Okay. So, but give me the specific name of that person and, and we yeah. can re research it. When you get home, shoot me an email and we'll research it. And then I had another one who didn't receive his thing in a time frame. He called his congressman. His congressman called me, wanted to find out what's going on. And oh. I had to explain to him. I had to go up to the office. I took the, uh, his receipt with me that I had, or I had the cap, you know, right. and that showed him. And finally, they said, oh, okay. And uh, I'm today, right today, I'm still hoping that he got it because I'm not going to go home and listen to Senator Knight again, you know, on what right. happened. So, we, and, you know, again, we can beat the specific scenarios to death, but I want to stick to generalities here. Get with me or, or Robin so that we can talk specific issues. But to your first question, when we get, when, when an application hits our doorstep, the, the new member should have their membership card and their welcome letter within three right. weeks to 30 days. Okay, should not take longer than 30 days. If you see that that has happened, give me the specific name so I can backtrack and check what, what's going on. The only time that that should ever be an issue is during year-end processes when people are sending us, you know, much more, uh, many more applications than we typically get, and my membership staff is kind of overwhelmed with the processing. Okay, because a lot of times that's at the same time that we've got our spring mailing coming back and things of that nature. So that's a good problem to have because we're processing so many applications, right? But typically the rest of the year, it should be within 30 days that they get their welcome letter in their card. If you see something different, let me know. But I need specifics. Okay, that's great. Okay. Thanks. Yep. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, I'm Jane Bolton from District 8. And I'm... I'm from District 8, Tennessee. Uh, we're in a rural location and it's hard for us to find people. And can you explain to me a formula that, because we're given a number that we're supposed to recruit during the year. Is mm -hmm. there a formula that tells how we get to that number? It's secret. Oh, well, <laughs> you don't know me, but I always want to know the whys. Yeah, no. So, it, it's Please. not a secret. It never should have been a secret, and I've been preaching it since I've been the membership director. So here it is. You ready? 55% of your part-life membership total plus your full-life membership total on July 1. Whatever that number is, that's your goal for the membership year. That's the current way that we, that we uh, determine goal. 
Thank so you. now I'm a Marine, forgive me, so I'm going to use round numbers because I don't math right. well. We're Navy, we understand you. Okay, so if you have 1,000 full-life members in your chapter and you have 100 part-life members, the number we're currently using is 55%. 55% of 100 is 55, so your goal would be 1,055 full-life members at the end of the membership year. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But we're going to change that. So don't get comfortable with that. My next question to that one is, when are you changing this? Uh, hopefully before next year. So we, the, that's one of the things, that is the major project for the Interim Membership Committee this year, uh, is to determine a new way to determine goal and a new way to, you know, how you should pursue a goal. As I was mentioning earlier, I think our focus should be on attracting new members new paid members, whether they're paid partial life or paid full life, when we, when we focus on nothing but the partial life, it's kind of like preaching to the choir, right? We don't want to do that. We want to get out uh, amongst the masses and, and get as many of the new folks in as we can. So what that will exactly look like, I don't know, but we're going to give you the tools you need to be successful while doing it. We're going to create a target-rich environment for you. You're not just going to bounce around in the ether hoping to run into somebody that's eligible for membership. I'm going to give you a specific list of names, addresses, email addresses, and phone numbers that you can tackle. Thank you. Okay. Excuse yes, sir. Me. I'm going to come forward. I want to give you my card. Uh-oh. This means he wants a phone call back. You want to take a card. <laughs> Because I've developed a sort of a 60-second um, elevator presentation. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have you look at the back of the card first with both our logos on it. And I'd like to see both our logos on something that you're presenting also. But uh, do you remember this blue logo? Disabled American Veterans. Yeah, We've been that's, our, that's our steel. It, it's still valid. Oh, mm -hmm. Okay, stand back. <laughs> Disabled American veterans, we've been around since 1920. We were congressionally approved to help disabled veterans and their families. This is our new logo. If you see it, don't be afraid of it. It's disabled American veterans. And here is when our, I'm with chapter in California. This is my chapter's meeting dates and where it is. If you turn to the front of the card, Right above the green on the bottom, it says, go to DAV.org if you'd like to join. Hit the membership button. You need a sponsor. There's my sponsor number, and there's my name. Thank you very much, sir. He likes the points. <laughs> Get them. Get everybody. When you're sitting in the VA, when you're at one of the VA clinics or hospitals, Ask the people next to you, are you a member of DAV? Are you a member of DAV? Carry cards with you and get them and give them cards. I'll get up in the clinic and I'll, I'll pitch to four people at a time, five people. I'll hand each one a card like I just did with you and that's what I do. But I would really like to see both our logos somewhere, the old logo and the new one. I know it's tough. We've been working on the change, but that's Thank you. Yes, sir. Take care. Yes, sir. Joel Quartermanch, Chapter 15, Virginia. When does my unit actually learn my chapter? Bite my tongue. When does my chapter learn that there are trial members? in our local area, and how are we notified? So uh, the departments have been provided with the trial member list by zip codes that belong to each particular state. So your department leadership has those lists now, and they can uh, uh, break those out and give you the ones that are in your, in your area. Um, so just look, contact your department folks, but w we are working towards helping them facilitate that moving forward. We're going to have some national conference calls. We're going to develop some best practices, things of, the, things of that nature. This is a totally new process, but if you're eager, eager to get a jump on it, please reach out to your department, and uh, I'm sure they can share that list with you right away. Thank you. Yep. 
Hi, uh, my Hello. name's uh, Tracy Williams. Hi, Tracy. And um, I'm clueless as to what chapter, or what anything I'm in, except my name tag says something. So I'm brand new. I'm only here. This is the first meeting I've ever been to, chapter-wise, anything. <laughs> and I have to be honest, the only reason why I'm here is because uh, I noticed on the calendar that it, it was right after uh, uh, another conference I was at, so I just extended my, my flight. Uh, my, so that's my comment. Um, I also think that this is, I was at the opening, and this is a very, very well-run conference. I am very, very impressed, and so it won't be my last. Oh, great, terrific, um, thank you. Yeah. My only, uh, and I'm very impressed that you have a women's issue thing. I wish I would have known that this was going to happen because I would have stayed tomorrow too. We, uh, we've been carrying that banner for many years. Yeah, that's awesome. Um, my only, uh, I guess, complaint, and I hate this kind of forum to complain. Oh, here, here comes the butt. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I got a welcome packet, like you said, and it was timely, like you said. I was very impressed with the quickness, and I was excited to, you know, contact my local chapter that I was placed in, and the phone number was wrong. So I am clueless to who this commander is because his phone number is wrong, and um, I think even his name is wrong, and um, and if the information that we got it doesn't tell me, you know, how to get a hold of anything in my state. Statewise, so I guess I would really have liked to have had in my packet a list of my, all the state information, you know, all the local chapters mm -hmm. in case I run into this. I've been to this address twice and nobody has been there, and nobody answers the phone number, and now I don't know where what, next. What, de what state are you in? What department? Washington State. Okay, so. Here's what you do. I mean, of course, our welcome letter needs to be tailored to the chapter that you're going to belong to, right? Uh, unfortunately, uh, sometimes this does happen. Uh, some chapters don't meet monthly. They meet every other month or sometimes yeah. once every three months. Yeah. Um, and they're busy doing other good work uh, away from the chapter yeah. house. But uh, certainly, if you go to DAV.org um, and click and hover over the membership tab, there's a find a local chapter tab. Click on that and you can find the contact information for any chapter in the state plus uh, the department. So for your uh, situation, what I'd recommend is contacting the department and they can help you get a hold of the right folks and determine is the chapter, you know, having some issue or is it the one that's, that's most viable for you and uh, maybe you need to be in a different chapter. Well, I, I guess I didn't want it to be individual, you know. Sure. I just think that when you send this information out to any new member, because um, when you become a new member, you don't want to have to work to get to the sure. place of wanting to volunteer. So if you, if you just included a, here's a list in your specific state right. or your specific department, because you have 52 departments, yeah. I heard. Uh, if you include that in the mailer, sure. that would make it a little easier uh, for us to not have to work to be able to volunteer. No, and, that's, that's and great. And that's the only, you That's know. great feedback. Uh, Warren's got a comment on that. I'll give the mic to him. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody in this room that's from the state of Washington other than that young lady standing in front of me? Right there. Would you, would you two go be willing to hook her up and, and, and connect her to the two? Raise your hands again so right. can see you. See those two guys right there? Go get a hold of them and let them let them be your temporary mentors to get you started with the DAV, okay? All right, thank you. Okay, a uh, couple, couple more questions here, and then we have to let the, uh, the next seminar have the room. Yes, sir. Yes, good afternoon. My name's Dave Wentz, and I'm from Chapter 6 in Oregon, I'm also on the State Council. I said, I, uh, my name is Dave Wentz. I'm from Chapter 6 in Oregon. I'm also on the State Council. Mm -hmm. um, chapter 6 is located in Salem, Oregon. In, in my area, we have five correctional institutions. 
Now, my problem is, is I will go into those correctional institutions to, to tap into the members, that, the potential members there. The problem is they don't have any cash immediately available to them to be able to pay for membership. I can, they will, I can get, have them sign off an authorization to have it taken out of their, their funds. So well, how do I go about doing this? Can I provide them with a trial membership? Is that possible until the funds catch up? Do I hold the application until the, until the funds, do I have the, the funds redirected through the chapter? I don't know how to proceed. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a tough one. Um, you know, if you send me an email on that about okay. trial memberships for folks in correctional institutions, and I'll float that past uh, our leadership, including Ed Hartman, our Inspector General, okay. um, to get some feedback on it. I don't want to give you an answer on that right now. Uh, we do do trial memberships for folks that are attending our job fairs, mm -hmm. uh, as well as our folks that are transitioning out of the military. So perhaps we could expand it that way. But shoot me an email, dwells at dav.org, and I'll, I'll get it considered for you. But, right. uh, yeah, that's a tough nut to crack, I know. Okay, even better not if you have a card, it makes it easier for me because my memory is not all that great. There's a card. There you go. Thank you, sir. So hey, these I'm will Tom. be the last questions that are in line here. I'm Tom Ferguson from L.A., better still, Lower Alabama, that he is. <laughs> and uh, chapter nine, we have 1,880 members in our little chapter. Yeah, I'll be my seeing question you in January. Is this. My question is this. Do you have a list of the members at large for our state that might be in our area? And if so, how do I get a hold of it? Uh, you either shoot me an email or give me a call or call any of my uh, staff on the membership team, and we can get that to you straight away. Roger that. Thank you. Yep. Uh, John Martinez, Chapter 2, uh, Pueblo, Colorado. Uh, this is a membership question, but it's pertaining to the uh, reporting of a death. Okay. Um, I called up and I spoke to one of the girls' membership, and she told me that I had to have a death certificate to send in, but I see nothing on that anywhere. So that threw me for a loop for the first time. So, so Somebody on my staff told you you had to have a death yeah, certificate? Yeah, one of the girls that... Um, at the membership number when I called in. Well, that's, that's incorrect. No, you do not. If, uh, especially if you're are listed on the officer report and you're reporting a deceased member to it, we, we take your word for it. All right. Thank so, you very much. Yes, sir. Hello thank again. You. I know. I'm sorry. I was in another meeting. So no, you're good. I apologize to everybody if I'm going to ask something that was already covered. Last year, we were talking about the DAV 360 that I thought was going to be implemented pretty soon to where we could do it like a mass email to all of our members. We wouldn't have to like ask for a list, mm -hmm. email, and all that kind of stuff. Please help me with that because there, I was in the other one where we were talking about Tweet, Facebook, and that's all good. But a lot of our members, we're lucky if they email. So if I can send out a mass email, you know, from some generated list from headquarters, it would right. be so much easier. So please help me, Mr. Wells. So I can get you a list of all the emails that I have amongst your membership and then how you utilize that. Well, uh, okay, yes. And I've gotten the spreadsheets before, and I right. cut and paste, and I do it the hard way. But right. what I'm talking about is some kind of program right. that could be accessible to where I can just go... Here's my chapter. Click mass email, and I don't have to cut and paste and all that kind yeah. of stuff. As I mentioned earlier, great minds think alike. That is in the plans. We've already got the user story developed for that as part of DAV 360. Unfortunately, like with most technological initiatives, uh, it's you know it, it, it has to take what it takes. Um, we were hopeful to have something out by the end of this year. That's probably not going to happen. We're we're gonna it's gonna it's a little bit more on the horizon. Uh, hopefully 2019 though. Um, but it, it's a little bit the ways down the road. All right. Thank you, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Well, folks, uh, again, I truly appreciate you uh, um, coming today. Uh, you know, we'll be around to answer questions. Don't forget about Robin and Heather. Uh, thank you so much for coming and give yourself a round of applause for the great work you do. Thank you.